Okay. Hello. So, um, I just, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. So I just wanted to say that, um, all the presentations were amazing and, um, I'm just proud of being part of this cohort and I guess we'll just introduce ourselves. Um, our group name is pop house and that's also the name of our app. And my name is Sebastian Granados and I graduated from the university of Texas at El Paso with a bachelor's in music education. My name is Angela Mott. I graduated from Northern Michigan University with a BS in psychology. I've been working as a teacher for the past several years. And my name is Carrie Stalnick, and I graduated from Villanova University with a Bachelor's of Science in Comprehensive Science, and then also more recently, a Master's of Arts in Religious Studies. So I actually have a personal story that I'd like to share to start this off. Um, so I recently adopted a puppy from a local shelter, um, and I went through a foster parent to get her. Uh, my experience was wonderful. Because of my communication with the foster parent, I was able to find out personal things about her behavior with the foster family and their children, which was especially great because I have nieces. Uh, because of the foster parent and I interacting and um, me being able to find out some personal things about her, I was able to discover that she had been um, house training her already and training her in other ways. Um, so thus, because I got her from the foster instead of the shelter, the transition into my home was a lot easier and I was kind of just able to pick up where they left off in their training. Um, so the app that we've created facilitates a nonprofit grassroots organization called Paw Pals that focuses on rescuing local animals in the community. Uh, the attention that animals get is more concentrated in a foster family than in a shelter. Um, in addition to all the benefits that I already listed that I had with my own personal experience, it's a richer, more intimate experience that you have uh, getting a pet from than straight from a shelter. So the users seeking adoption who log into our app are able to connect with foster parents directly and vice versa. The foster parents are able to connect with adopters that way as well. Uh, they are able to browse through the list of adoptable pets that we have available. And they're also able to easily schedule appointments to see the animals with the foster parents. Okay, and the technologies that we're using for our database, we're using Docker, Docker, Docker and MySQL. And for the backend, we were using Java, Spring Boot, and also for the security, and we use REST APIs. And for the front end, we use JavaScript, React, and for our extended learning, since we're all, uh, we all come from a non-technical background. We thought Bootstrap would be a good, solid um, technology to use since it's really popular. All right, and here's just a look at our data schema. So our three big main uh, variables were our app users, our animals, and schedule. Um, and along with the app user, we also have different roles. So uh, we distinguish between foster parents and potential adopters, as well as having more admin roles like staff or volunteer. And then there's a join table app user role for to combine those two. And then of course the app wouldn't be anything without the animals. So we have a table for that as well as the appointments and keeping track of them with the schedule table. So we'll go ahead and do the uh, demonstration now. Okay, so this is our homepage that um, anyone who I guess visits our page this is what they would see. They would be able to just, um, they could see all the animals that are available to adopt right now. They can't really function with it until they log in. So if you go to your login page, we'll put we'll log in as an adopter. So this is someone that's already registered. And then once you log in, it'll go ahead and welcome you with your name here. And then you could go ahead and see new options that have been um, shown. So if you wanna go ahead and adopt a pet, you could click here. And right here, it'll show the, uh, different cards with the different pets available. But now you could go ahead and click visit, but it'll show here like, their name, age, the species, the breed, size, a little description on their friendliness and how long, um, when they were here. So if you wanna go ahead and visit Zazu, um, you could go ahead and schedule an appointment here. Let's say next Friday at 11.45 AM. We'll go ahead and add that to the schedule. And it'll show here, the schedule is um, 11.45 carry. And then the foster right here is Dex Fitch and it has shows his phone number here. But if you realize you can't make it at that time, you need it an hour later, you could go ahead and edit it. Let's say put it an hour later at 12.45. Update schedule, and it'll go ahead and update here. And then also, 
you could go ahead and see the users. If you want to go ahead and put your phone number, you could only edit the one that you're, um, whoever's logged in, you'll go ahead and edit here. Let's put a phone number and it'll show here. Um, and then we could go ahead and log out. And now we'll log in with someone with administrator privileges. So right here, it'll show um, the admin's name. And then it'll show the same users here. But when you go ahead and go to adopt, um, it'll show everything, visit, edit, delete. So if you go down here, here's Rocky. It shows that he's a reptile so and a German Shepherd large. Obviously, he's not that. So you could go ahead and edit that. Change that to Chihuahua. He's actually 15 since he's he's a little old guy. Small. He's available. Not a reptile, a dog. And you could go ahead and see those changes right here. 15 dog Chihuahua small. And then right here in the schedule, you could go ahead and see that. Let's see who's popular. Zazu, he's been popular. So we could go ahead and say he's been adopted. So we'll go ahead and delete him. And it'll ask if you want to delete Zazu. So he's now in his forever home. So he doesn't show here. And now if we go back to the schedule, his schedule appointments have been deleted since he's not there anymore. And then if you, um, the admin could also update um, any of the users. So let's say we need to add an, ad an address here. Um, it auto-filled for me. So it'll go ahead and update with the address and the phone number. You could go ahead and go back home and then just log out. And that was our demo. Let me go ahead and back to the slideshow. And so just to give an idea of what each of us contributed on. So I did more of the back end stuff. So I worked on the database with MySQL, um, as well as other repositories and doing the testing for data and domain. I kind of was in between the back end and the front end. Um, I completed the services in the domain, the controllers, um, drew the security, and then uh, got that HTTP request to working. Um, I communicated a lot with uh, both of them. And then I also um, helped Sebastian a little bit with a few of the React components. Okay. And I was mostly in charge of the front end with the React, um, building all the components, the design. I got uh, a lot of help from Angie in the design. And the bootstrap, that's something that um, we all implemented, um, I guess, choosing how to design it, making sure it was the way we wanted it to, and the security. I also worked a lot with um, Angie on the security to make sure it only showed what needed to be showed to certain users. Collectively, uh, we learned a lot together as we worked together through planning, collaborating in different ways, negotiating on what was going to be in our application, showing flexibility and amiability with each other. Um, we grew in our ability to manage our time, um, be dependable to one another, and also just professionally communicate. So looking back on our project of things that we would do differently now, having more experience of actually worked through it all, um, some things that we would love to expand upon our app would be to individualize the images of the animals. So um, to provide a way for um, users to add animals to the list um, and be able to store those images um, on the on the site. And then in addition to that, it would be to reformat some of the data schema. Uh, we connected the foster parent in charge of the animal um, in the animal class. And if we were reworking it, we would have uh, made them a joint table. So it was a little bit easier to uh, communicate between the tables, um, especially on the front end, and then also allow users to have multiple roles. So a user could be a, both a foster and an adopter. Um, and then in addition to that, we went full crud for users and animals. We have it for uh, schedule right now. Uh, and currently we're just missing adding for users and animals to reach that goal. Some of the challenges that we faced uh, collectively as a team in, uh, involved joining our different tables together. Um, we do have a few joint tables through the MySQL, but pulling them through the layers of our Java um, was a little bit of a challenge as well as nesting the, the data within different tables in React. So that was something that we all grew um, in and developed our skills along the way that provided quite a challenge for us at the beginning. The other thing was learning how to navigate through and build a security system. 
um, we had different roles uh, for different users that logged in. So learning how to authenticate those different roles was a bit of a challenge as well as logging in with credentials created by users. Um, debugging, we all became experts like everybody else. Um, debugging through the authentication process and the security in the back end uh, was quite a stretch for me and everybody else. It's something that we had to do quite a bit, sometimes daily or multiple times a day. Um, also accessing our database and our MySQL, debugging through um, any errors that we might have had through that was something that we um, had to do quite a bit as well. So this past week has been a lot of debugging, especially. So that's our app. Uh, so if anyone has any questions. Really well done, you guys. Excellent work. Um, I really like the UI. I also really liked all the pictures of the pets. You picked some good pictures. I'm a, I'm a pet person myself. Um, you outlined a lot of your um, your goals and the division of, of labor. Um, one of the things that I saw highlighted is, is the negotiation, right? I think that's one of those interesting things not a lot of people talk about is having to come together and agree on, on what you will, will build. So what was maybe the biggest hurdle that you guys had when it came to that negotiation and collaboration? Um, I can think of one. Uh was when we were working on the schedule and getting that all of the values up onto the front end, onto the website. Uh, we did a lot of sort of trying to figure out how to get the information from both the foster and the adopter um, onto the same table. And it had to do with the fact that the way the tables were joined, um, they were like two, one was in the app table, one was in the schedule table, or one was in the animal table and the other one was in the schedule table. And so we, really probably spent a good like three days uh, trying to figure out how to get all the information in one place and uh, kind of trying to figure out if it needed to be reworked on the in MySQL or if there was a way to fetch that uh, from the front end and kind of like figuring out like where along the route of the data uh, it made sense to be able to like pool the information that we needed. Dex says, this would be an amazing tool for shelters to register trusted fosters and would build a central grassroots network of compassionate people. I do think it's uh, interesting. You guys took a different approach than a lot of um, other um, pet finder, pet adoption um, applications. So I, I really did appreciate that foster approach, right? And it's amazing how it seems so simple for a non-technical person to say, well, of course a person could have multiple roles and um, the amount of work I'm sure that it would take to get there is is uh, not lost on me, right? I mean, you, what you guys were able to put together in terms of the functionality for this is really impressive. You should be um, quite proud of yourselves. Dex wants to know, um, he loves the scheduling system too. How did you integrate that and decide on your tools? I guess for the scheduling, that was that was the most difficult part that I was worried about since from the beginning. Um, but we ended up, um, we were going to add a, um, Calendly, but we had to pay for that. So we decided we have to do make our own schedule. So we got ahead, um, we went ahead and went with that. And just to implement it, every time you click on the, I guess, an animal, it'll add the ID of the foster parent and whoever's logged in automatically, then you could go ahead and schedule. Um, but that's basically the the inner workings of the schedule. It's just a simple schedule for, for now. We could probably implement something more in depth if we had more time, like another two weeks. Yeah, it's amazing what you guys were able to accomplish in that, that two week span. And, and if only had two more weeks, right? How far you could go. Yeah. 